Uh, today we're gonna do something pretty cool. We're gonna do a spotlight on the Bubble King or Royal Exclusive line of skimmers. We'll kind of talk about some of the features that are there, what they do, don't do, uh, as well as why each one of these four different types of models exists on the planet. Oh, yeah. And even if you're not really in the market for a high-end skimmer, I think you're gonna see some pretty cool concepts. So these are the Bugatti of protein skimmers. I mean, they've been around for like 30 years triple the amount of time I've been in the hobby. Yeah, for me, like double uh, the time I've been in the hobby. So that's a little, really, 30 years is a long time. That's right? a long time. And so they're all over the forums. Everybody shared their experience with them. And you know, they're actually kind of copied by almost every skimmer company out there. <laughs> really, in some cases, almost one for one replicas. Oh yeah. And uh, really, man, like they represent the best of the best. Actually, this current generation of these Bubble King replicas, you know, copied Bubble King's innovations so well uh, that they actually offer a pretty good value for the same type of design. Uh, probably why they did so well in our 2019 best of protein skimmers. Yeah, end of story here. I don't think anybody questions the 30 years of success and performance that's come out of these skimmers. The question really is, is more about cost. Mm. All right, so what does a thousand dollar plus skimmer actually get you? Yeah, uh, German made pumps, Red Dragon. So uh, these are the Red Dragon DC pumps in the four models, different sizes, what have you. Uh, also, you know, the heavy duty PVC slash acrylic build. That means like hand welded, you know, seams on some of these uh, larger models, some here. So just high quality. Yeah, so a lot of that stuff just ends up in like kind of longevity and uh, some elements of performance. You know, and that's kind of what you get when you go into like a German made product rather than a cheap imported product designed to be as cheap as humanly possible. Oh, yeah. But really for me, actually it isn't about all the little things. You can go into the PVC build, you can go into how heavy every piece of it is and how heavy duty is. But really for me, this is about getting a skimmer from people who make skimmers for a living and actually use them. So this is really all about getting the right tool for the right job. And the, one of the first steps of that is actually believing that the people that built it mm. actually know how to size it properly. You're not just slapping on a pump on the side of an acrylic tube and calling it done. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, you go look at some of the gallon ratings, heavy bio load, medium bio load, light bio load. One, I don't even know what that means. And a lot of times those numbers are arbitrary and can be super spaced apart. Yeah, so for after 30 years of doing it, you kind of hone in on what actually yeah. works. And so for them, heavy bio load means that it's a half inch of fish per gallon of water. So in a 100 gallon uh, tank, that's a good rule of thumb of about 50 inches of total fish. But more importantly to me, that it's conservatively rated because mm. they will openly state that oversized doesn't work. Don't get too big. Yeah, I mean, for, for a company that's trying to sell skimmers, for them to tell you not to get the biggest, most expensive skimmer, I mean, that's something, that's something I can rely on. Yeah, basically if you get too big, there's not enough organics inside the tank to fill the huge tube full of foam and it just doesn't work. Uh, so you're better off going smaller than bigger than most cases, but even better than uh, going smaller or bigger, right tool, right job, and following guidelines from somebody that you trust. They actually tell you to step down your skimmer, not just because bigger is not better, uh, in, but actually because your filtration, other filtration approaches. So using filter socks, uh, using like a fleece mat type material. Uh, you experienced this one firsthand. They told you in your for your 360 uh, to not get the properly rated size skimmer, but go a step down. Yeah, so if you're pulling all of the waste, or not all, but like more than half of the waste out just with uh, changing out your filter socks, you know, like daily or yeah. every couple of days, or, or if you got uh, an automatic fleece roller that just rolls all the fished waste and uneaten food right out, there's way less load on the skimmer, which means there's less fuel for the skimmer because there's less organics in the water. And to make it work properly, you go down one. Yeah. Okay, so this is again, you know, advice that comes from somebody that has been doing this for a long time and can help you select the right tool for the right job, not just try to sell you the biggest thing out there. Yeah, and then in this case, you know, we're gonna talk about the four models that we have here and a reason why each one exists in the universe. Yeah, so for me, I have a lot of experience in skimmers and you go look at all the lines and it is not <laughs> clear why all of these exist. And actually no. for this one too. Yeah. Uh, I looked at it, there's the Supermarine, there's the Mini, there's the Deluxe, there's the Double, the double Cone. cone. Yeah. Like, which one would I want for what reason? Um, and you know what? There is a super legit reason for each one of these things and uh, I think we're gonna let you know. Okay, so there are four models here, but before we get into it, I just wanna ask all of you to think about it are you one of these four types of people? Mm -hmm. 
One, I just want the best, right? Yeah. I want it to skim wet, <laughs> I want it to skim dry. Yeah. I, I want to be able to create that type of foam really easily. And then, even better, I want to treat, have adjustments that allows me to collect that foam really easy as well, whether it's wet or dry. Just super, super easy to use, and I want the best. Or you could ask yourself, am I just a wet skim aid guy? I don't need a whole lot of fine tuning. I just want to you know, get as much out as I can and get a little cost savings too. There's also another model in here, which uh, you might not know which one it is at the moment, mm -hmm. but I just want it to be as cheap as possible. I want yeah. that kind of like BK performance, but I want to save as much money as possible. I think there's a lot of people that are going to raise their hand for that one. Yeah. Uh, but what is the fourth? This next one I raised my own hand for because of my tank here in the office and uh, what, the one I'm going to use. But do I just need a high performance skimmer uh, that has the same quality of the Bubble King, but I have a small space and I need it to be small. Yeah, so they may look like they're just a bunch of acrylic tubes with a pump on the side and like, well, I know there's little design differences, but why? So we're gonna dive right into that and you're gonna see exactly why each one of these does these things uniquely well. If you answered like you're in the first category where I want the best, I want the ability to wet, dry, you know, all of these types of adjustment, uh, adjustments, this is the version for you. This is the Bubble King Deluxe versions. Uh, and you know, related to creating that dry and wet foam, DC skimmer pump. So the Red Dragon DC pump here, which means I can adjust how much air goes into my skimmer body based on the amount of food and uh, organics I have in my tank, where I'm trying to find that balance between the amount of organics and the amount of air to create the type of foam that I want. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I've talked to other skimmer manufacturers out there and, you know, when DC pumps came out, it was like, well, why do you want DC? Because isn't more air better, yeah. right? And everybody's like, I, I don't know, when people want DCs, they're quieter. Uh, actually talking to these guys, they're like, dude, this thing is capable of so much more air than you actually need in most tanks. Mm. You're definitely going to want to tune it down, yeah. right? And proper production of foam and collection of it is balancing the amount of air with the amount of organics in your tank. And uh, if you're wondering about it, you know, Randy did a whole bunch of BRS TV investigates oh, on yeah. it. We did a video on tuning, you can go watch all that stuff. But it was really refreshing to hear from these guys that they've already started off on that and that's why it's built that way, is you can actually reduce the air and it's built up so that it scales with the size of your tank. So if I only have like a few fish in the beginning, I can turn the air way down, mm -hmm. right? And then as I get more and more fish, just turn the air up and I can keep that uh, balance right to get the right type of foam I'm looking for where it doesn't just pop. You know, yeah. one of the things you can see almost immediately if you have too much air is it's just, you know, air bubbles top to bottom, but at the top, it just looks like it's boiling, yeah. right? And that means that you have way too much air for the amount of organics and you can't pre create a stable foam head for all the velocity of air that's coming out the top. So this allows you to have that adjustment, but what makes it different, and this is, the, again, they all have that DC pump, yeah. but what makes this one different or the deluxe different than all the other ones is the adjustments. So most of you are probably familiar with the ability to like turn a wedge pipe, right. and the wedge pipe will like raise it and lower it. However, with this one, it's kind of like that balance between uh, like a recirculating skimmer or not. Because yeah. a recirculating skimmer, one of the best things is that you don't have to worry about water height. Yeah, I feel like this is, in my mind's eye, I, I picture this as like a hybrid, you know, single pump sort of recirculating. In that like the water height that my skimmer sits in does affect, you know, the where, uh, you know, the head pressure on the pump, especially in these, especially in these single, you know, pump type of designs where it's doing double duty, we're drawing in water and air. But in this case, all I have to do is raise where that drains out so I can raise and lower the amount of water in my body by using this telescoping uh, pipe here. This is a big, big difference. And it's I'm huge. surprised that other people don't do this actually. Yeah. Because normally it's just that wedge pipe and the water's leaving at the bottom mm -hmm. and all that head pressure, right? Yep. In this case, to leave the skimmer, the water actually has to come up the pipe and then come out right here. So this creates an artificial water level in here, mm -hmm. right? And so I can just telescope it up and down until I find the right uh, way to take out the foam that I'm looking for. Again, we've created the type of foam that we wanted, dry or wet, and now we're adjusting how we collect that type of foam. So the cool part is, is actually it's a dual uh, uh, adjustment. Yeah. So I'm gonna get like largely really close and it's stable there, right? Mm -hmm. And then in here is the wedge pipe. So I'm gonna tune it to where I want it and then 
fine tune it with the wedge pipe, but I, I can like not grossly mess this up. Natch Y, not only is it the most tunable, wet and dry, yeah. but it's also the easiest because I got three things that I know exactly what they're doing. I'm creating the type of foam, I can visually see it inside of here when I've hit the right type of foam. Then I'm adjusting to pretty close and then fine tuning. So that is why this one is the easiest to tune and why it's uh, ideal for wet and dry applications. Along with that, this is the hand welded uh, seams on this one right here. And you know, the, the really interesting part to me is where the drain, the water drains out of the body. If you look, it's underneath the bubble plate. So all of the air and bubbles is happening up here and the water drains out here. So making it probably the least likely to have micro bubbles or bubbles escaping the body. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna see that a lot with any of these designs, but you know, it's that added effort, you know, that like, eliminates anything that you might be unhappy with. You can look at this, you know, other things also, just like simple things like not hard connecting the pump to the body. Mm. You know, there's a silicone piece here that eliminates any vibration or noise. And it's just those attentions to detail that uh, really separates it from the pack. So the Super Marin is for those of you who answered that second question where, I'm just a wet skimming kind of guy. I want to get the job done. I want to get as much out as I possibly can and do it at a lower cost. In fact, if you look at the website, they actually call this guy the sledgehammer, <laughs> right? I mean, wet skimming is kind of like a sledgehammer, man. Yeah. I don't care, I'm pulling out some extra water or yeah, whatever, yeah. but I'm probably pulling out the most waste at the same time. And in that case, it's just a little easier to uh, adjust as well. So mm -hmm. get the type of foam that you're looking for, which is wet, it flows over really easy. I don't need as many fine tune adjustments. And so I can just use the wedge pipe here. And you know what, because the whole design is simpler, I can actually save a few hundred bucks. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's similar to the deluxe version, ex except I don't have the telescoping, you know, adjustment. I just have the wedge pipe. Uh, but in this case, you know, I get bottom to top reaction. You know, because you see the injection port of the, of the pump is absolutely at the most bottom. It very well could be in the body. So top to bottom, I get that reaction chamber. And a bit cheaper than the deluxe, three to 400 bucks uh, you're gonna save by going with this version. Yeah, so if you're a wet skimmer and you know it, and that's just the way that you roll, uh, <laughs> you might as well save the 340 bu or three to 400 bucks and just get the Super Marin. This is the double cone, and this one is for those of you who answered that third question where you want to get into that BK family, but you wanna do it at a more cost-effective price point. You can see it's extruded, so they, that's where, where some of the savings you know, comes from. We're not hand welding seams. Uh, you, you can see that uh, you've got some nice pressed edges, but what you're, but you're also getting, you're not like skimping on performance. Probably you know, similar performance to the Super Marin, uh, but just in a way that does it uh, more cost-effectively. Actually, that's the exact goal, yeah. right? Uh, they shared with me that the goal here is to get almost the exact same performance you'd get out of the Super Marin, yeah. but let's like make it a little easier to build so we can pass those savings on, right? And True. so instead of building another cone and welding it on the top, it's in one form piece. Uh, there's a bunch of different areas where it just made it a lot easier for them to build. So they're gonna shave three, 400 bucks off mm. the cost, which means like what, six to 800 bucks off of the uh, larger brother uh, with the deluxe. Yeah. So you save a lot of money. There are a couple of different things though about it. One is you'll notice that when you made it into one piece, the action chamber actually gets a little smaller because yeah. it has to you know kind of form up as it goes up yeah it's not as heavy duty so it's different material also but uh, uh, still the same performance also uh, you know smaller reaction chamber but you know in in the same fashion sort of like a smaller footprint too yeah. So if I'm in that kind of pocket where I want like a really sweet skimmer, right? But I also kind of want to look for wherever that like intersection of value is, where yeah. like cost uh, is going to intersect with uh, performance. I'm probably going to get really similar performance, but I'm going to reduce the cost. And so uh, the double cone here uh, fits that bill perfectly. So this one's for me, the Bubble King Mini. This is for you if you answered question number four, and that is, I'm just limited on space, but I want the Bubble King performance. This is the one for you. It's space saving design uh, in pumps in the body. You know what? I'm not really sure, but like I can't think of a skimmer that had the pump in the body and the space saving design 
before, before Bubble King one? did it. Uh -huh. There probably is one out there, but it might be actually that they are the innovators of that actual design. Yeah, so that uh, that are right up there in the in the beginning of the people that were doing this, and people copied it afterwards. Yeah. So yeah, space saving design. Let's uh, you don't get the, like the full length of reaction chamber because the pumps in there. It's just kind of one of the trade offs of mm -hmm. doing it this way. Uh, but you obviously space, save a ton of ton of space by putting the pump inside the skimmer. Yeah, and a red. I mean, same Red Dragon DC you know, skimmer pumps, the valve adjustment. I mean, all of the features for the other three models are in this in a more compact version uh, but and this one is slightly cheaper as well uh, but that's not what it's about yeah it's really not about saving money in this case it's about getting the right tool for the right job right. and fit in the space and i will say actually this is one of the things we didn't mention about the uh, double cone is the double cone and this one come in smaller uh, sizes than some of the uh, larger mm. brothers yep. as well so like if you're just looking for a smaller skimmer that fits in a smaller place this is absolutely it all right, so one of those things probably spoke to you, and now you can kind of see like why these things exist on the planet and why they're different. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Even if you're in the market for a lower cost gamer, I think you can start to look for some of those features in mm. other brands as well and say, yeah, that's the right tool for the right oh, job for sense. me. Yeah. Uh, but more importantly, if you're actually in the market for one of these things, you know, now you have the gift that was given to me, <laughs> which is instead of just looking at four skimmers on there and like not knowing why I'd want any of them, it's really clear as to why each one of these tools exist yeah. on the planet and what they do. All right, so what's next? Well, the proof's kind of always in the pudding here, so we're going to actually test them out in a few tanks here so that uh, when the best of 2020 comes around... I've got some knowledge and user base. I mean, so for me, we're going to do that in one of three ways. One, I get this little uh, mini 160 Bubble King here. So it's, it's rated from like 60 to 180 gallons. It's a 60-gallon cube tank in my office. So I'm going to have to have a lot of fish, heavy bio load, a lot of nutrition input, which is, you know, really, you know, feeding that conversation here. And with the DC pump, I'm excited to see how this thing performs. Yeah, heavy protein in, heavy out, kind of fits that uh, hybrid method that we've been talking about. Yeah. And actually the what we're seeing, like, success with all, all over the That's place true. here. Uh, all right, so the next one that we want to test is going to be on the BRS 160, just because that one is one of the most like closely watched tanks here. And we're going to put the double cone on there. Uh, it's the most affordable one out yeah. there. And uh, Josh takes care of that tank. He's going to be watching it real closely. We'll share with you, you know, Facebook shots and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see our opinion of, like, does it actually match up to the performance of the other models just at a lower cost point? Because that'd be really sweet to be able to share. Yeah, and then you already have, you know, so this was kind of like set in stone before we got there, but you already have a deluxe for your mm -hmm. 360. Yeah, so I have a deluxe uh, 200 for the 360 gallon tank that's at my house, and I will be a heavy bio load. I'm gonna get a ton of fish for this tank because I just uh, that's actually the thing that my family's the most excited about right. is uh, selecting the fish. But it's rated lower than your tank display. Yeah, so for heavy bio load, for light bio load, it actually goes up around that 360 range. Yeah. But, but I'm not gonna be light. It's gonna be <laughs> heavy, which only goes down to 180 gallons. So oh, yeah. it would look like it's way undersized, but it's not because I'm gonna. Have have that uh, filter floss yep. automatic roller in there, right? And so following uh, their advice, I'm actually gonna scale it down a step and even though it's heavy bio load at 180, I'm gonna actually do heavy bio load with the 200. So I get to save some money on the skimmer, I guess, and get a small one because I've done other areas of filtration uh, pretty well. So that's pretty exciting. So we're gonna share all of that with you guys uh, over the next year. Hopefully yeah. in the 2020 best of, we'll be able to you know, uh, share all of the things that we liked uh, and maybe pick out some of the special models that really rose to the top. Uh, and all this stuff. Yeah, so I mean, if you want to check out what we thought of for skimmers last year, go check out the 2019 Best of Skimmers, uh, where we give our opinions on those, and watch for this one coming up uh, later on this year. You can find that uh, playlist, the Best of 2019, right down here. Yeah, you can actually see some of the replicas. It oh, made, yeah. did really well <laughs> in that one as well, uh, not surprisingly, actually. So check them all out, Best of 2019.